Melatonin is a real superhero when it comes to PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. It's been shown in repeated studies over a dozen human trials and lots and lots of animals and cell studies out there have demonstrated has lots and lots of benefits. Now, please check out the first video I've done on this, which is talking about the gut, because melatonin is, of course, linked to the gut. But let's talk about it. The first thing about melatonin is there are a lot of myths out there perpetuated primarily by the medical industry. Now, there are 10 thousand studies on the benefits of melatonin. I haven't exaggerated that number. And when it comes to the safety of melatonin, all at the end of every single one of those studies, it says, and we're not really sure about our safety, but the side effects tend to be a headache and a little bit of fatigue, and that's it. In fact, after reading literally over the last 20 years of my research on melatonin, should mention that both melatonin and tryptophan were banned and removed. Tryptophan is the precursor, the amino acid that's in our body made into melatonin, were banned literally when all of the antidepressants came out because they were the main forms of dealing with everything from mood disorders right through to depression, anxiety and stress. Interesting, isn't it? I'll come back to this. So first of all, the benefits of melatonin. I want to give you a brief rundown. First of all, the antioxidant. Now, when I talk about antioxidant, everyone knows that anti, the oxidation and the inflammation in our body is the driver of all illnesses, particularly polycystic ovarian syndrome. So if we've got something that works at that level of lowering the oxidation and inflammation, then you've got something instantly you know is going to have a benefit. And it's known for being a powerful antioxidant. But the real benefit of antioxidant is that it gets right into where the cells are generating. See, every time you uh, burn up any form of energy, okay, glucose in the cell, so to speak, you produce a little bit of free radicals, oxidation, that first and foremost is fixed up by melatonin. Melatonin stops the damage done to your mitochondria. Your mitochondria is the energy cell of your body of your cells. It's the energy organelle of your of your cells. Everything in your body runs through the mitochondria and, and melatonin is there to actually protect them and repair them. So it's actually universally recognized as an important mitochondrial protection, okay? So in, inflammation, it's anti-inflammatory, it's anti-cancer, a range of cancers, but in particular the cancers related to PCOS, the endocrine-related cancers. Um, it's anti-diabetic, huge number of studies, hundreds of studies on the benefits of human studies, animal studies, cell studies on the benefits for diabetes, which is closely related. And the, the, the literally the glucose, glucose dysregulation closely related to PCOS. Um, it's antiviral. And uh, as far as I can tell, it appears to work on all viruses. And you're ready, you're probably thinking, well, what about COVID? There's over 100 studies on the benefits of melatonin for COVID treatment as an adjuvant treatment to help in other treatments on its own, separated with lots of other nutrients, and it all shows up incredibly positive. It even has been shown to be effective against the Ebola virus. Now, I'm sure you've heard of that one. If not, look it up. That's the, the really, really, really deadly one, okay? Um, so the message is it's a, incredibly anti, a potently antiviral, uh, anti-metabolic uh, syndrome. So it helps with all those uh, um, hypertension, high blood pressure, um, uh, dysregulated blood sugar, all of those factors literally linked to with metabolic syndrome. It's been shown to benefit skin and bone. It's beneficial if you look at some of the videos I've already done on bone health and osteoporosis, you see that melatonin is a potent, a potent bone health supplement. So it's been shown to actually stimulate the osteoblasts, which put the calcium on the bone and the protein on the bone. So that's where you really want to get to. Uh, neurological diseases, including Alzheimer's. There are umpteen studies now, that's not a scientific term, but you get the idea. There are lots of studies now where they're using Alzheimer's as, as a condition and they're finding it, it slows down the progression of Alzheimer's disease. This is, and by the way, there is a link between PCOS and an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. So you can see the benefit in here. And of course, dot, 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 lots more things in there I'll, I'll be putting up. And of course, it has reproductive benefits. It's used in um, IVF. 
and the studies now show when, when we talk about when we talk about safety okay it's used in IVF why because it almost doubles the rate of um, literally the, the the fertilization rate of the egg and it's starting to develop so this is pretty amazing it almost doubles it and this is all just a simple neurohormone called melatonin and it doesn't just work because it's an antioxidant anti-inflammatory has other properties too when it comes to reproductive I, I, on on the safety side i should also mention that infants who are born preterm have low levels of melatonin and our levels decline as age and one of the treatments they're doing now with preterm infants preterm infants they're giving them melatonin so reproductive and for finally PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. There's a lot of studies on the benefits for PCOS. And I want to go into it again, just describing and sharing with you some information about melatonin so you can get a gist of why. First of all, melatonin you can get in your diet from an ingredient called tryptophan amino acid, and that's if you're eating a healthy diet. If you're not eating a healthy diet, you're eating a standard Western diet, processed food, you're getting low levels of tryptophan, low levels of the minerals needed to convert the tryptophan to melatonin, and you're not getting the phytomelatonin that you find in lots of the food. Now, very low levels. And reportedly, the two highest levels are cherries and probably pistachio nuts, but the pistachio nut one is in controversy a little bit. So you can get some melatonin via that. Healthy diet, you're going to get more melatonin. Unhealthy diet, less. It also produced in the gut. And this is where it's important to mention that any gut disorders means you're going to have lower levels of melatonin. Everything from uh, reflux to bloating to constipation to diarrhea means you'll probably have lower levels of melatonin. Now, it's produced primarily in the pineal gland other than the gut and through the diet. And it is produced at night time in the dark and the more light you're exposed to the less melatonin and the the disruption of the phasing of it the timing of it occurs so what's critical here is to make sure when you go to bed early i hope then you make sure that you have total dark and so what we're after is total dark at night time all cells um it's a major antioxidant in all your cells where the mitochondria are doing all their energy things and all organs, including in your ovaries. Wow, which is why it has a couple of what are called melatonin receptors in there that has such a benefit. Now, what's really interesting, again, uh, uh, related to the myths is I've, I've heard some people say, oh, it affects the hormones. Yeah, wait a minute, it affects the hormones in an incredibly positive, balanced way. And I cannot understand why this isn't well known, well established, because as I said, there are 10,000 studies on the benefits. Now, what are some of the things that cause disruption? I've hinted any nightlight, electromagnetic radiation, and that's what we're literally surrounded with nowadays. Uh, stress, lots of pharmaceuticals, lots and lots of pharmaceuticals can play havoc with it. And as well as I've already mentioned, poor digestion. So hence why, as we age in particular now, we have lower levels of melatonin. These are the benefits that have been shown with melatonin and polycystic ovarian syndrome. I've literally summarized dozens of studies that I've read up on. And I'm going to give you some of the details of the study so you see the amounts they use, when they use them, how they use them, and all those other factors in just a moment. But it has the antioxidant anti-inflammatory effects, PCOS. There is a high level of oxidation and inflammation, and it lowers this level. Insulin sensitivity and glycemic control. Um, it's used extensively now for diabetes type 2. So these, some of the factors in diabetes type 2 are closely linked in PCOS and that insulin dysregulation and the high glycemic index has a big impact on the other aspects of PCOS, which I talk about in my part one of this series. Um, it regulates uh, sex hormones, in particular decreasing free floating testosterone in the blood. Gonadotrophins, which is the beginning of the egg, and the development of the egg. So uh, hence why in the IVS, it improves fertilization rates. Um, circadian rhythm, huge. It, it is known as the sleep hormone, but that is just a fraction of the real benefits of it because it has such a, a universal 
a universal application to health conditions in our body. It's called pleiotrophic in science, which means lots and lots and lots of benefits around the place. And of course, they are linked in with the sleep cycles, which are disrupted in PCOS. Uh, rebalancing and regulating the menstrual cycles, lowering pain, lowering mood disorders, and of course, lowering hair, hirsutism throughout or over the body. The benefits of melatonin for PCOS are really overwhelming. There are literally dozens and dozens and dozens of studies on mice and rats and animals, other animals to do with PCOS and melatonin, and even more to do with cell studies. But the important ones are how does it all translate into women or with women who have PCOS? Um, there's about a dozen or so studies that I could find specifically on it. In one case, 40 women over six months. Now, all of the supplementation varied between three and about 10 milligrams per day. In some of the supplementation, it was spread two or three times during the day. Other times it was taken just at night time. But in this case, 40 women, six months, it led to a decrease in menstrual irregularities, a DP, a decrease in hyperandrogenism, and a decrease in inflammation. Another study of 56 women, 12 weeks, supplementing with five milligrams per day of melatonin, a decrease in hirsutism, uh, total testosterone, a decrease in inflammation and oxidation, which are the driving forces behind many of the conditions in PCOS, and an increase in the antioxidant capacity, which literally meant that their bodies and in the cells are producing their own antioxidants as another mechanism for the defense against that oxidation. Uh, when they start adding it to other nutrients, they also see some added on benefits. There are studies, which I'll talk about in my next round of a video on PCOS, there are studies specifically where they've looked at other nutrients, for example, vitamin E and magnesium and so on. We'll talk about those later. But here, they've added the two together because they both have mixed combination of properties. Magnesium is really good as a total antioxidant and it's involved in something like over two, 300 chemical reactions around the body in the cells. So very important. So melatonin plus magnesium for eight weeks, a decreased hirsutism, decreased inflammation, and a decreased oxidation. Now, all these studies measure different parameters. That's why you see, this, this is just a, a product of the type of studies that are done, unfortunately. In another study where they looked at melatonin, three milligrams, plus magnesium oxide of 250 milligrams. Now, magnesium oxide is probably about the worst type of magnesium to get. In other words, it's the least absorbable. You can get much better sources and much better magnesium to add into there. But here they had three milligrams of melatonin, melatonin, 250 milligrams of magnesium oxide, and 84 women in this trial, eight weeks, decreased insulin and decreased insulin resistance so that the sugar can get into the cells where it needs to get the work done out of blood. It decreased the LDLC, the lower density lipoprotein, the, the um, cholesterol C, which is the one that gets oxidized and damaged, and it increased the so-called good one, which is the one that is more protective. And it also led to a decrease in total testosterone. So, so adding magnesium and melatonin seems to have a little bit of an add-on benefit. And of course, they've used it in artificial insemination. One of the big issues to do with polycystic ovarian syndrome is it dramatically reduces fertility. So a lot of the women and the couples refer to um, IVF type procedures. Now, in all of the studies, and there's uh, about half a dozen that I can find where they did it alone or in combination, they found that it improved the outcome. And in this case, melatonin, um, three milligrams per day, 198 women, it increased interuterine insemination from 18% to 32%. Now, given that you're talking about three milligrams, which is pretty small, consumed on a daily basis, um, a pretty good outcome if you consider it. Melatonin and metformin. Now, this was nine milligrams of Melatonin with metformin. Metformin is one of the drugs of pharmaceuticals. By the way, metformin it primarily works through the gut. So it stimulates the production of the right type of gut bacteria, in particular one called Acomensia mucinophilia, and that has anti-insulinia, anti uh, all those anti-glucose, anti all those positive benefits in, in terms of balancing the blood sugar level, and it works through the gut. So when they do melatonin and metformin together, it had a one time, 1.8 times increase in clinical pregnancy for um, in vitro fertilization beyond what metformin was doing on its own. 
So that 1.8 times increase was added on to if you just did metformin. Pretty good, again, pretty good outcome, isn't it? Now remember that we have a whole video just on the gut as a driving force for PCOS. So make sure you watch that video and subscribe to the channel because lots more coming. And finally, another one where they've added melatonin and, and inositol. Inositol is frequently used by women with PCOS. It's a common supplement, easy to get over the counter. And it enhanced the oocyte, which is, which is a basic formation of the early eggs, and embryo quality, improved fertility, and reproductive outcomes. A win-win situation. So the message is, there is no one way to treat PCOS, to reverse it. There are many ways and combinations. That's why the first video we've done looks at the gut and how by improving the gut, it can have dramatic effects just by improving the gut. The second one, melatonin. Add melatonin to that. And, and again, melatonin works partly by stimulating uh, gut as well. So it has a very, very positive benefit on the gut microbiome. And then third, we're looking at all the nutrient and lifestyle factors in the next video. Make sure you subscribe and share this with your friends.